and welcome to another episode of The Collection. Today, we are going to look at two items. That's right. This one and that one. The Chainsaws from Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3, Leatherface. behind me. Let's start with part two. This is it right here. This bad boy right here. And uh, this is the one that poor Bob Elmore had to lug around during all the chasing scenes and fighting scenes. And this was a real working chainsaw with a dull blade. So this is the one he was using when he was fighting with Dennis Hopper and you know, going after anybody ripping through the radio station, this would be the one right here. Now these are quite heavy. <clears throat> I would say that this sucker is a good, I don't know, 25, 30 pounds. Bob is definitely getting his work out. Bob Elmore was kind enough to come by the house and verify it was the real deal and even autograph the bottom of it for me. And then right here, we have the Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3, Leatherface. Now this one is a real chainsaw also with actual blades on the saw. These are very sharp. So this would have been the one that they used for like the money shots probably when he's cleaning it and, um, you know, it's not running more, more than likely. I, doubt, I don't know. They might've shot some scenes with this one running. I'm not sure. This is the one Ari Mihailov would have used in the film. I know there were at least, I believe two others made for the film. I believe, uh, my good friend, Jason Guy owns one. And here's Jason with his chainsaw. Also, Jason posing with R.A. Mihailov, who played Leatherface in Part 3. And I don't know where the other one is. I know there was the Excalibur one, which was used in the trailer. There were two saws made for the trailer. The son of the owner of Cameron, the company who made the trailer for New Line Cinema, had both in his possession. He eventually ended up giving one to Neil Oliver, a chainsaw superfan and guy who makes incredible replicas. These are the two original saws right here. I love the pipes on the bottom. Such a cool touch. It's all original. It's missing this guy on the other side. Other than that, it is complete and original and in amazing condition. I've always loved the look of this chainsaw. It's just such a beautiful piece of art. Back in 2012, the first saw went on the auction block. I remember going down to Profiles and History's office and bidding in person. I always regretted not pulling the trigger on it. I ended up losing out to Jason Guy, who I'm glad ended up getting it because he's since taken it around to conventions and let fans see it in person. But when the second one went up for auction, I was not going to lose. And I ended up paying three times what the first one went for. So I know what you're saying. Well, Sean, you need the one from part one. Well, I know that is owned by a private collector, and I doubt he's parting with it anytime soon. But hey, sir, if you ever decide, you know, I'm here, you know, saw his family. We should keep it all in the family, shouldn't we? I think so. This one's not as heavy as the part two one. Close. Real close. But I'd say this is probably 20 pounds. Maybe 18 pounds, 20 pounds. Longer blade, but not quite as heavy. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, the saw is family, and always uh, look out for those hard shell peppercorns. They a bitch on the teeth. Hook them over.